night has fallen on the city of Fort Henson. And while some say nothing good happens after midnight, it's only 7 p.m. and a no good villain is about to ruin everybody's night at a local restaurant. See what I did there? Lieutenant Nash, Mrs. Nash, we're so pleased you're joining us. Hello, Alicia. Are we celebrating something special today? Not really. Oh yeah, nothing but his 12 years on the force. Well... That's certainly worth celebrating, and we're glad you could do it with us. Right this way, please. How's this? This is great. Thank you. Philip will be here in just a moment to take your drink orders. Enjoy! Aren't you glad we got out today? I'm warming up to it. You needed a break. You needed time to decompress and not feel like you have to watch your back all the time. I'd like to think I don't have to do that here, but I'm afraid to let my guard down. Let it down. Please. For me. All right. Consider it down. For you. For now. Thank you. Evening, Mr. and Mrs. Nash. What can I get you to drink? I'll have my usual. Very well. Sir, what do you recommend for an evening of decompression? Ah, uh, that's easy. I'd say... Stop it! Hmm, the waitstaff here is a little pushy. I'm going to have to mention that in my internet review. Greetings, everyone. Sorry to interrupt your evening, but I'm here for a reason, and there was no quiet way to do this. I am Drench. They call me that because, well, let's just say it's what I do. And I use a lot of tools to do it. Like this little beauty. <laughs> you scared yet? That's a water gun. Precisely. You're going down, man. Oh, really? You gonna be a hero? Yeah. I ain't afraid to get wet. Hmm. What if I shoot it in the air instead? That's some sort of acid. Look out! Get away, get away! The chandelier is going to... Anyone else want to get wet? <laughs> What about you, Lieutenant Nash? Wanna get wet? Who are you? Let these people go! <laughs> you always had trouble listening, Nash. I said my name was Drench. Remember? I said my tools make me who I am. Remember? And this little pistol has something in it just for you. <laughs> Please, don't hurt him. Hurt him? That's too easy. Nah, he's already hurt himself. You once were told that you were crazy to pursue your self-righteous crusades and personal missions, remember? Okay, fellas, why don't you make him open his mouth and say, ah? <laughs> Relax, everyone, or Mrs. Nash gets what's left of the chandelier juice. You were told if you continued to be a nuisance, you'd be crazy. And now, you'll go crazy. <laughs> you idiots, get her off of me! All that training and you're getting beat up by this harpy in a costume. Oh. Oh, that, 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 fine, get out of the way. Hey, two pen Samantha. Uh. Nice block, but now you've lost a wing. And what's a crane without the feathers? One with a backup plan. Ow! What the hell did you throw at me? Cranes don't throw crap at people. Grab the gun. Not so fast. I've got more. 
that if you take one step closer, this lady will look like Jeff Goldblum. What? After he became the fly. Oh. Well, let's go, guys. We've done our duty. Let's get out of here. Steve. Steve. Talk to me. Mm. Hey. <laughs> hey. Talk to me. Uh, this is ice cream. Are, are you all right? Can I get a Sunday? I want a Sunday. And 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 it's got to have some ice cream and some fudge and some 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 peanuts. Oh my god, what's happened to you? And pickles. I want pickles on my Sunday. <laughs> The Crimson Files. Created by Scott Murray. Episode 2, Crane to Fame. Okay, so he filled water guns with toxins. What did he look like? Okay. Give me a give me a second to think. I'm still a little flustered. Take your time. He was he was bald. He wore dark goggles. Uh, like like swimming goggles. He had this this thing over his mouth. I don't know if it was just a mask or some sort of breathing thing. He wore this black, uh, it was slick, a wetsuit-looking thing with, um, a black and an orange trench coat. And you said the crane was here? Yeah, but she's gone. And by the time she got here, the damage was done. By the time she left, the damage is worse. I want pickles! Lots and lots of pickles! While pickles might be an odd or even nauseating addition to an ice cream sundae, Wyatt and Reggie are hoping to fit right in at the Slick Saucy Studio. Okay, Wyatt, Reggie, thank you for being here. Do you have any other questions about the interview? No. When will this post online? Later tonight. Cool, cool. Anything else? All right, well, sit tight and Mr. Saucy will be with you shortly. What? I'm just impressed he can say Mr. Saucy with a straight face. I burst out laughing if I had to say that all the time. How should I approach this? What do you mean? Think about it. I have a journalism degree. All of my training has been on the other side of the interview. How do I do this and look smart, insightful? Do what famous actors do. What do they do? Show a little ego, some confidence, by talking and doing things like the random scratch. I'm lost. You've watched actors and celebrities get interviewed before, right? They all do it. Just talk, smile, then occasionally get that random itch on your ear. Then talk and smile, look confident, and then, oh, scratch that random itch on the chin. <laughs> You're crazy. I'm serious. You can pull it off. Watch me. So, um, uh, yeah, uh, um, we we were hot on the um trail of the crane. A uh, small scratch. <laughs> <laughs> we uh saw her take down this dude in the alley and save the day. And um, small scratch. <laughs> <laughs> you almost pulled that off nicely. Hey, I make it look suave. <laughs> Who's ready for the saucy interview? Hey! Hey, Slick. We are, we are. Thank you guys for coming on. I thought your Crimson Crane footage was phenom. Absolutely phenom. Oh, thanks. So, let's talk about it, shall we? Sure. 
The Crimson Crane has returned to her super-secret hideout, otherwise known as Grandma Jeannie's house. It is there that the crane attempts to repair her damaged wings. <sighs> Damn it. Who fills a water gun with acid? And how does it not melt the gun? Are you talking to yourself again, dear? <sighs> Did you hear what I was saying? Something about shooting a gun while on acid? Close enough. I was talking to you then. Why do you wear wings when you can't even fly? They have their use. Oh, yes. They are pretty, and you look so beautiful in them. Thanks. If only they were just a little more durable. Right. But there again, they're feathers, so what can you do? Exactly. And what can I do for you, Grandma Jeannie? I sent you a link. I'll look at it later. Now's not the time to watch a dog dance to techno music. Oh, yes. Well, he sure was cutting a rug. No, dear. I sent you an interview. It's with the guys that filmed you in the alley the other night. I think you might actually have someone on your side for once. <laughs> Now give us the saucy details. Be honest. Did you follow the crane because you were hoping to catch her screwing something up or what? No, that wasn't it at all. We follow it because we think she's awesome. Whoa, awesome? Awesome how? She's like an Earth Day concert. Things start off with good intentions, and by the time it's over, everything's been trashed. Well, she trashed that criminal, that's for sure. After she caused a car accident chasing after him. Not intentionally. Well, okay, what about the restaurant incident? She shows up after the cop has been poisoned, wrecks the place, and then whoosh, disappears. Actually, I read that she intervened at a good time. He didn't empty the weapon. Had he done that, the officer may have never recovered. He would have permanently lost his mind. Yeah, why aren't you doing any stories about the bad guy? I mean, what was in that water gun? Guys, guys, let's not lose sight of who's doing the interview because it's me. Slick, okay? I just want to know your motivation for sharing the video. Is there an agenda here? Cause I think there is. That's my saucy opinion. Good to know. Originally, I don't think we had an agenda. We just acted on an instinct. But now, after talking to you, I think I've changed my mind. I think people needed to see this video and they need to see more. I think the press, angry politicians and others have conveniently painted her to be something bad. And I think you've now inspired me to change the narrative. Me, Slick Saucy, inspired you to do this? Really? What are you gonna do? Stand out in the street with your camera and hope she shows up? Whatever makes your sauce, I guess. Good luck with that. This is Slick Saucy thanking you for tuning in to today's show full of saucy material. <sighs> It is a new day, and Detective Luke Donovan and his partner Chase are enjoying some breakfast before work. You can probably guess what they're eating. Here's a hint. It's not a bacon and sausage biscuit with cheese. Are we representing a stereotype when we come here? What do you mean? Come on, Luke. We're two police officers sitting in a park eating donuts. So? We don't even get out of the squad car. It's like we're embarrassed. I'm not embarrassed. I just like air conditioning. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. You'd better throw these away before we're late and get into real trouble. Right. Jeez. Let me get the door for you, Detective Donovan. Who are you? Name's Dredge. Now, get out of the car, please.
You're a cop killer. Aw, now that's harsh. I made a cop go temporarily manners. Is that the same as killing? All right, muzzle mouth. Hands up. Chase, no! <laughs> Okay, you're right. I'm a cop killer. What do you want? I'm so glad you asked, Luke. Because I'm going to give you a chance to walk away and give me what I want. Which is? First, I want you to stop your little corrupt cop crusade and make your mind refocus. I want you to find the Crimson Crane and anybody else she has helping her. You'll be doing people a great service. And to me, this city, police officers. The bad ones? Call them what you want. I'm going to need you to do this rather quickly, too. I'll be checking in on you. Take too much time, and you will be joining your partner there. Oops. <laughs> I mean, former partner. <laughs> Back at Wyatt's house, new inspirations have led to a new creative endeavor for Reggie and Wyatt. This is looking good. Yeah? I just wish we had more content. Yeah. I mean, the crane video right smack in the middle of the front page is, is just awesome. It's just BAM! You can't miss it. Yes, but I named the site The Crimson Files. Files like... More than one, but all it has is a video. We just... need to go crane hunting. And where do we start with that? I don't know. Maybe she has a flight pattern. A flight pattern? Yeah, maybe she's scouring the city right now, looking for crime. Or maybe she's on their roof, listening in. I hate being on the roof. Why can't these guys live on the first floor? Okay. Activating... Mic. Recording systems on. Can I help you? Mr. Hartman, I'm Detective Luke Donovan of the Fort Henson Police Department. I'd like to ask you a few questions about the crane. Uh, sure. This is Reggie. Ah uh, yes, I remember from the interview. How can we help you, sir? I know you two are big fans of the crane. I'm just here to tell you that I am too. I appreciate what she's trying to do, but recent history suggests she's going to get herself killed if we don't... if we don't give her some assistance. Do you know where we can find her? No, sir. Our video was the only time we saw her. And you're not working with her in any way? No. That was more than enough excitement for us. <laughs> yeah. I thought you said in the interview you were going to try to help her. Uh, we set that for effect. <laughs> yeah. Excuse me, detective. Greetings, bird watchers! I come bearing gifts for thy mighty crane content thou shall create. Uh, Doc, listen. Behold, my latest invention, hover pods. You place your recording devices in them, and as long as you have this in your pocket, the devices will follow you wherever you go. So the next time you are chasing the crane, use this and I won't feel like vomiting in my cereal when I watch it the next morning. Doc? When shall I expect the first video on thecrimsonfiles.com? Uh, Doc, this is Detective Donovan. We were just explaining to him that all our talk about the crane was just fluff. Sensationalism for the interview. Yes. Yes, I, I do recall the tale of crane sensationalism. Uh, so anyway, you can use these two to peep in on the hot roommates next to my plate. <coughs> <laughs> Just kidding, detective. I mean, uh, hey guys, I got these new cameras for your next LARP battle. It shall be epic, and it shall be recorded! See you on the battlefield, Ewoks! I hope everything's cleared up. Yes. 
Yes, sir. Look, stay away from the Crimson Crane. She's a danger to herself and others. However, if you see her, here's my card. Call me immediately. Great. My list of fans grows by the day. At least I know that detective's name. Time to go. You guys seem to be pretty resourceful, so ask around. Keep an eye out. If you see anything... <gasps> what was that? Good question. Stay back. Who's there? What the... Excuse me. It's her. Hey! It's, it's her. her! It's her! It's her! Don't forget the camera floaties! What do we do? Let's get your car! Don't! My keys are inside! Hop in, young travelers! I've got her on my tracking screen! Let us join her in flight! We're going to die. Jeez, this girl has a death wish. The gallant detective has turned on his siren. Are we chasing him, or are we chasing the lady biker? Um, both? Mainly the crane, just don't make it obvious. Oh, it's not obvious. If it weren't for my trusty tracking system, we would have lost them by now. How are you tracking her? It's an awesome, somewhat confusing, but, but simple piece of science, my boy. My camera locked onto her as she pulled away. The computer does the rest. And right now, she's moving faster than a toupee in a hurricane. Ah, no. Don't run the light. Don't run the light. Don't! Sorry, sorry. Sorry! She jumped the curb! Damn, I can't take this piece of crap for a mud ride. I need... One of those. Don't worry, officer! We'll track her down for you! Well, gents, we're no longer on the road. I see that. So, we won't be getting turn-by-turn -turn directions. I haven't configured this thing to say, turn by that tree or go around the cow. Where is she going? I don't know. L let me expand the map a little more and... Uh, hmm. What is it? I've lost her. What? How is that possible? I, I don't know. A, a cloaking device? What? Come on, man. Maybe she went into that house. How? By jumping that big-ass fence? Maybe the... Bike has rocket boosters. Maybe she jammed your tracker software. Impossible. If she were nearby, I would know it. What's that? I don't know. Sounds mechanical. Yeah, but where is it coming from? Guys, we're sinking. This is an odd environment for quicksand. Doc. Especially quicksand that can swallow a truck. Doc. It's not quicksand, it's like some sort of elevator. Now what? Could someone turn on the lights, please? Thank you. Should we get out? Should I turn the truck back on and bulldoze our way out? What if you run out of room? Impossible. I designed this thing to Guys, and... guys, guys! Look. Oh. My. God. All right. Get out. All of you. 
We have business to discuss. I think we just officially lied to that police officer. What happens when the crane's biggest fans meet her in person? Will Detective Donovan catch a crane before Drench makes him a victim? And will Doc really use his floating cameras to record a live action role play battle? Join us next week for another episode of The Crimson Files. Written and produced by Scott Murray. Starring Quinn Angel as Wyatt, Jared J. Lee as Reggie, John Phelan as Doc, Gary Payne as Drench, Stephanie Nadalny as the Crimson Crane, Hunter Dusing as Slick Saucy, Reuben Corbett as the narrator. For more Crimson Files and a full cast listing, visit thecrimsonfiles.com. The Crimson Crane theme was composed and produced by Cloud Road Music. I am Simone Maddox, and this is The Crimson Files. <laughs>